Good Monday morning, everyone. We had a fantastic weekend, uh, actually a terrific week last week. You guys will hear more about that as the week goes along. Um, I want to. Uh, we want to do a coffee and questions this morning, and I've got uh, actually several questions from uh, one uh, specific gentleman, and then I want to go into something about marketing right at the end of this video, which I think you guys will really like. So. Um, Andy Littleton asked, uh, he's a brand new uh, kind of sign carver, and he asked actually uh, several different questions. Uh, first one is, um, can you talk about techniques in freehand routing? He said, you've told us about hand placement. I've gone over that a lot in recent videos about where I put my hands in relation to the router base plate and the board and how I do that. He said, but where are you looking as you're cutting? I've had that question before and I never really think about it, but it is a really good valid question. So I wanna, I, I made kind of a little, uh, a little deal here and I wanna kind of go over where I'm actually looking while, while I'm carving. So let's take uh, two different letters. One of them is an outset letter, and I've only just started carving these, obviously, but it's all I needed for this particular example. So I've started carving the outset letter here. And I, again, uh, just to reiterate, I normally, almost always, pull the router toward myself, I have a better vision rather than pushing it away where I'd have to wonder where the back side of the bit is. So I almost always pull. So uh, let's say for instance I'm carving this and I've got my profile bit in and what although it wouldn't really matter what bit. Where I'm actually looking when I'm when I'm doing this and I'm focusing, here's where I'm looking because here's well, well let me do it from this side. I'm looking right here because as I pull that router down toward me, this is what really counts. This is my letter. So I'm actually looking at this edge. I try not to touch metal to that cardboard to that carbide. It's a bad idea. Uh, but I needed something good that was a pointer. My fat finger won't fit in there. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, I look at this edge because this is what really counts. And you can see I leave a little bit of a black there. Um, and then sometimes I'll go back if I vary away from that a little bit. I'll go back and kind of touch that up. But this is the edge of really where I'm looking at as that cutter is coming down. And I've had this, um, actually I was talking to somebody not too long ago. And they were actually looking at the point of the cutter and that was causing them to actually run into there and, and make a bad cut when it came to an outset letter. So this is where I actually look when I'm, uh, when I'm cutting outset letters. <clears throat> okay, so now, inset letters. Where am I looking on this one? So I've got my 60 degree bit in here. Let's assume that I'm, I'm making that cut. Now, here's what, uh, so where I look here is actually, I'll move that down. I'm actually looking on both sides of the, because this is pretty much one pass as I'm coming, cutting, coming down. Now, if I was, if I was using my profile bit in here and I was cutting these uh, inset letters with my profile bit, which you can do, I don't normally do that, but my dad does, then I would be doing pretty much what I did on that outset letter. I'd be looking at the edge of the cutter, the side of the cutter, which I just touched that carbide, didn't I? The side of the cutter that's cutting the edge of the letter. So um, now here's a, the tricky part with this. When I'm cutting the top of this letter and I'm coming across, I can't see from my vantage point, I can't see on the other side of the cutter, uh, on the top side. So um, I, I do it just because I've done so many. But let's say, for instance, you're brand new at it. What I would do if I were you is I would turn that board sideways if you feel you need to. And, and that way you can actually see the top of the letter. This is where you really are paying attention. Uh, that's where you want your straight line. So feel free to, to rotate that board, guys. Don't necessarily do it all the time the way I do it. I'm very comfortable with cutting that line and knowing where the top of that cutter is. But if you have to turn it sideways and turn it around, upside down, whatever, that's the cool thing is um, you can just turn it and, and make it comfortable for you. So I hope that kind of clears that up. Um, 
the next thing he asks, it, which I've never thought about, the next thing he asks, he says, are you pulling with your arms, your shoulder, your shoulders, or your body? Never thought about it before. I actually had to put a router in my hand and, and think about it. So, going back down here, um, I'm, I'm definitely, as I'm pulling here, I'm definitely not pulling with my body. My body pretty much is in, in one spot. I'm not pulling with my shoulders. I'm pulling more with my arms or my hands, I suppose. But being as my hands are kind of at the end of my arms, I think <laughs> most of the time they are. Um, I think I'm pulling with my arms, to be honest. If I had to pick one of those, I think I'm pulling with my arms. So again, uh, this is stuff that I don't think about that much. But it certainly is a valid question, especially for brand new people. So let's move on to the next part of his, uh, his question. Your line of sight. Now, line of sight, that was really kind of, I'm not sure exactly what he meant by that. But my assumption would be that my line of sight is, is looking directly through. If I was on that side of the bench, I'd be looking directly through this way directly through the opening in the router, whichever side you're on. So I guess that's what he means by line of sight. And then the last part is bench height. Uh, now that is really important. So let me show you, um, and I've gone over this kind of a few times before. Now right now I'm sitting on a stool, but I really wouldn't carve on this stool. I would change my seat. So I'm going to actually stand up. So this stool is really high. This thing is, uh, but it makes it nice for filming. I've just been, this is about 24 inches high, this stool. But where I'm comfortable carving, and everybody's body type is different, but where I'm comfortable carving is um, having the bench about mid chest. That's where I'm carving. That's where I, but I, I'm 5'9", so, you know, depending on how you're built. And your bench height, too. Yeah, and your bench height, my bench height is on here, um, it, it depends on your bench height. So this is about 34 inches tall. This bench is one of those Harbor Freight benches. And my, my seat is about, uh, right about 16 inches. So that works well for my body type. Now let me... And, and, and this is really important for brand new carvers, especially young people, because I started carving when I was 10 years old. I can remember back in the old days, uh, it didn't matter. My bench could be up here, it could be down here. It really didn't matter because I didn't even think about it. It just wasn't, um, it, it wasn't a, an issue for me because I was flexible, I was young, you know, it just wasn't an issue. I have neck problems now because I think I spent so much time looking down. I, so I would have been carving on this deal and, and hunched over and um, just horrible posture. So when at all possible, I suggest, number one, using a chair that has a back to it. I think it's, a, it's a very important, at least for me, especially at this age, because I have... I have back issues, I have neck issues, and so if I constantly tell myself to lean to keep my posture upright, um, then I'm putting pressure against that back, and I'm taking pressure off my neck and my, my lower back, especially if I've got my, my relation to the bench height to, um, to where my chair is. So again, for me, Every, you know, you can do what you want to do, but for me, I wish somebody had kind of gone over that with me when I was really young, because I don't think I would have the neck issues or the back issues. I might anyway, with all the football and all the other stuff I did, tearing my body up. But anyway, I think it's really important, especially if you've got kids and young people that you're teaching, your kids, your grandkids or whatever, teach them about posture when they're when they're actually uh, carbon signs and for you guys as well so again if I turn sideways you can see this bit this height of this bench is right about mid chest right there so um, that is I think that will hopefully that will answer uh, all of Andy's questions and maybe it'll it, for you guys that are brand new that you're wondering about that kind of stuff um, I'm hopefully hopefully that is helpful for you as well all right last Last part here, this is actually going to be a pretty quick video. 
Uh, if you guys have any questions, obviously, email me. Don't, not Facebook, but Eric at MakerWoodSign.com. So, last week, uh, Dad and I went to California. Vicki stayed here. She Somebody had to run the business. Uh, and we went to California uh, for a doctor's appointment for Dad. But one of the things that we also did is my buddy, Patrick, set up a fishing trip for Dad and myself and my son, Ryan. So here is, um, here is a couple signs. You guys might have seen this. This is a sign that my son made for the guide that took us out. His name is Jeff. Um, I can't remember his last name right offhand, but he, uh, Ryan made this sign for him in exchange for a fishing trip. So I guess my point is, and I've got another example, my point is collaborations don't always have to be for business. It might be something that you want. Maybe you'll make a sign for, um, uh, for an RV place at, in, in, uh, in exchange for an RV rental. Or, you know, it could be anything, but um, what do they call that? Barter. Bartering. Bartering is, is, is a great way to not only get your, your work out there, but also to get value for you. So, you know, for a, a $200 fishing, uh, which is what it would have cost Ryan to go out with, the, with Jeff, the guide, he ha had a few hours work and maybe... Uh, $15 worth of material and he got two hours worth of uh, or $200 worth of value out of that so and he got another piece of work out there that all the people that Jeff is gonna take is gonna see this sign so it, it it's just a win-win so don't think that you always got to be just about business barter stuff man barter is is a great way to go here's another deal now now what led Ryan to meet Jeff was my buddy Patrick but he also, and you guys will see this soon, he also made a sign for this uh, duck club that we went to, and I'm gonna, uh, you're gonna see some video of this here pretty soon. Um, but when we were out fishing, there's a there's this duck club that's actually private, and Ryan now is kind of made this, and he's kind of hooked into this duck club, which is. An amazing place in fact I may put the the clip to this duck club at the end of this video since this isn't real long yeah I think I will actually um, and uh, Ryan has now uh, access to this duck club like a lot so he can go out there and, and this duck club I talk about it in the video but the guy that owns this duck club is is strictly private and there's a thousand acres of wetland um, delta around him so he can fish anyway it's it's crazy but again that is there's a lot of people that the owner of this duck club this is my buddy Patrick but the owner of this duck club owns all this land around there and he saves this place just for his personal friends and you can imagine somebody that owns that much probably has some friends that may have some money and you know may be in need of some signs so Collaborations are huge, not just for business, but also for personal value. So do that bartering thing whenever possible. If you're going to buy a, a to buy something, and for, especially from the, an owner of a business, maybe a restaurant, maybe you know, uh, barter out a big sign, a big commercial sign for meals. We used to do that all the time. I was constantly doing that. There's a lot of times where we ate just based on barter that we had coming from a big sign that I made. So barter is huge. Um, anyway, I guess that's about it. Um, oh, yeah. And oh, by the way, um, we didn't catch any fish on that, uh, on that deal. And I think Jeff felt so bad about it that Ryan and Gwen, my granddaughter, Ryan's daughter, uh, went back out with uh, Jeff just the other day and uh, and she caught a big uh, like a 46 inch sturgeon so it was really cool that's what that that's what that fish is by the way that's a sturgeon that's a bass. yeah that's a striper striped bass anyway so it was really cool Gwen caught her first sturgeon dad and I and Ryan we got skunked when we went out <laughs> but uh, it wasn't Jeff's fault it was just one of those deals but uh, now Gwenny went out with him again and uh, caught a big sturgeon. But anyway, so you guys will see a video at the end here. Um, you will see a video of the, um, 
of that duck club that Ryan now has access to, uh, thanks to my buddy uh, Patrick, who kind of connected everybody. Um, the other thing is I want to, again, thank Mike Caruso. Thank you so much for that outro. Job. And we've got a new intro coming. Oh, actually, you're going to see the new intro because we've got it now. You're going to see the new intro on this video. So that new intro, if you compare that to ones you've seen before, uh, Mike just redid our intro for us. I absolutely love it. So thank you, my friend. Thank you so much, uh, Mike. Uh, and Nadia and Charlie and new baby on the way. New baby, yeah. Yeah, so um, we haven't heard the announcement yet, but we're going to hear the announcement of the sex of the new baby of the Caruso, uh, the Caruso, Caruso clan, clan yeah. up in uh, Canada. So thank you again, my friends, uh, Mike and Nadia. Thank you so much. Um, you guys have really knocked it out of the park with the new intro and the new outro. So you guys will see that. If you haven't seen that yet, you'll see it here in a, in a second right after this video. So thanks again, guys. I uh, hope this was helpful. If, you, if it was, we ask you to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please share this. Oh, if you do subscribe, be sure and click that little bell icon so you get notification when we post a new video. Um, please share the video uh, for other woodworkers that you know. We'd appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, you can write me at eric at makeawoodsign.com. Um, thanks again for all the support and uh, and all the love, guys. We, we love you all. Everybody, have a great week. we got another uh, co uh, coffee and questions. I was tapping. I wasn't pounding. I was tapping. Uh, we got another coffee and questions coming up, and then we got a really special video coming up on Friday. So Wednesday will be another coffee and questions, some really good questions. So keep those questions coming, guys, and, and pictures of sign carvers of the day. We'll have another one of those within a week or so. So keep those coming as well. Eric at makeawoodsign.com. Thanks, guys. Oh, I'm on Instagram, makeawoodsign. Post it there every day. I'm out of breath. That's enough. <laughs> See you, guys. Have a great one. Bye-bye. This is crazy. We are at uh, Jeff's uh, buddy's oh, duck club okay. right now. What they call the duck club. This used to be a duck club. But it ain't duck club anymore. Private duck club. Private, private duck club, club. Yeah. now, yeah. Well, for yeah. <laughs> crazy. Wow. Yeah, we need to get this on film for our customers to see for sure. This is, uh, so we are on a fishing on tour excur excursion, and this is um, the gentleman that's taking hey, us out fishing. Yeah, this. this is, uh, this is where oh, he yeah, stays. So it's uh, kind of neat little double level man cave, I guess you'd call it, right on the water. The pictures you saw before were approaching this really cool little place. Like this mount right here. We're going to uh, get ready and go catch some sturgeon and some striker. So this is what the duck club looks like from upstairs. This is where we were just a minute ago. Downstairs. And this, I, it used to be a duck club but I'm not sure. Say hi, Dad. Well, that's the entrance that we just came out of. This is what it looks like around. Again, the gentleman that owns this, it's a private club now, and he owns uh, about a thousand acres that surround this place. So this is where they do the most of the eating. Most of the cooking and stuff is done out here for obvious reasons. But check this out, guys. Man, what a life. What a life it would be. And then that dock goes right out into the channel, and they can fish right 
right out there. They can fish anywhere, I guess, but man, it's amazing. This is a cool place. <laughs>